Bluff City Media presents the No Bluffing Podcast. Stepping up to the microphone are your hosts, Christian Ingram and Evan Hayes. Now, let's get to the show. Greetings Nation, what's going on? I'm Chris Ingram. And I'm Evan Hayes. And welcome back to the No Bluffing Podcast, where we keep it all the way real, all the way raw, about everything Grizzlies, all the way honest. I forgot my last one, but you know, it's all good, man. <laughs> I, don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that, but you know, mm-hmm. we gonna, we going to keep it still honest. Y'all know we're going to do that. Stay like that. Yes, sir. Welcome back to another week. Uh, excited, man. We got an amazing show for y'all today. I just want y'all to know. We have an amazing show for y'all today. Y'all don't want to skip a beat. Um, a lot of great topics to talk about, a lot of just things that have kind of popped off and transpired in the last week or so. And we got a very special guest, too. Yes, we uh, do. Somebody that y'all have never seen on a podcast. Like, we got the exclusive. Like, like this first come, first curve. It's us. We we got the first. Y'all, y'all, y'all can't come and try to snatch him at, because we got him, you know. <laughs> Right, I, y'all, I, y'all get our sloppy seconds if y'all get them down. exactly. You feel me? <laughs> oh man, we got Adam Pike, man. Uh, if y'all do not follow him on Twitter, um, you need to go ahead and stop what you're doing right now and give him a follow at Grizzlies Film on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. But man, this man is a phenomenal guy as far as breaking down, um, just NBA gameplay. Um, I learned a lot from this this gentleman, and 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 I'm sure a lot of people else that's in Grizz Nation or just basketball savants or people that's looking to learn more. I'm sure they learn a lot from him. And so we got him coming in our first segment, uh, just here in a few minutes, man. I'm excited to kind of just talk some of these plays and uh, the playbook period, you know, through through uh, with Adam for sure. So for the first time, no bluffing. We got him first. So when he blow up, just know where you saw him first, man. Exactly. <laughs> but before we get into the no bluffing news, Evan, bro, how was your week? I'm up here just kind of vibing with my webcam, so don't worry about me, y'all. <laughs> uh, how was your week, bro? How what, what you do? What was you know your highlight of your week? Uh, things like that. Uh, it was smooth. Just a little busy week, you know. Like um, finals coming up in April. You know how April is for um, college. People just find us and all that. I was in UT Knoxville yesterday for another track meet, so it was, it was cool. A lot of Division ones there, a lot of people, a lot of friends from the area came, so it was good to see my people. Um, but yeah, pretty smooth with just a lot of stuff going on, just busy, bro. Still running, still trying to get my grades straight, you know, but you know, can't complain, you know, blessed and highly favored, as we always say. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty, pretty customary week. Just got another big week coming up. Every week, this residue until like the last week of April, May is gonna be a big week for me. So you know, but I'm still yeah. bringing this heat to though. You know, just because of the <laughs> other thing, don't mean I can't come in here every Sunday and get some heat to y'all though. But that was my week. How was your week? Hey, pretty first of all, peep, peep the new, peep the new setup, y'all. Like my boy, yeah, Chris man. doing some work. Like peep come the new on. setup, y'all. Let us know what y'all think, cause like we think we look pretty smooth right now. You yeah. feel me? I know Chris, yeah. Chris back in his childhood house right now, so don't worry about all that right now. Cause last week. <laughs> I was in my grandma's house last week, so we we gonna get it, but we still bring y'all heat. But right. just keep that. But anyway, Chris, how was your week, bro? Man, it was good, bro. Um, busy week work wise, but you know, being a parent is always on go. It's always something new every single day. We know how mm-hmm. that go. And um, man, I I, I know we're gonna talk about it in the last segment. Spoiler alert. Uh, but I did get down, like you said, to Memphis. That's why I'm in my childhood room. We swapping childhood rooms for the week, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, got down to Memphis, man, to 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 celebrate Marcus all and, and and bro. When I tell you that was a, that was a highlight. Um, yeah, most uh, definitely. We, we we had we had another topic we was gonna talk about, and I text Evan late late, you know, after the game. I said, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I, we got to change that. We got to do an audible. After being in the room and with everything going on, we we got to talk about it. Plus, we didn't really get to talk about that documentary like I wanted to. Um, yeah. So we're gonna just kind of tie all that in. I know it's kind of week after that, but this 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 retirement stuff was you know fresh. So we're gonna talk about that. But yeah, man. Other than that, I, I mean, I had a great week. Um, and like like the, the the great poet from Memphis once said, at the end of the day, the day gonna end. They gonna so. end. Yep. Shout out. <laughs> for sure. Shout out. So. Hello. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, we're going to get into all of that, man. Uh, so, you know what? Let's just go on and jump into the no bluffing news right now. Let's, like I, Let's get to I, it. I, I don't see no point of 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 of, of, of just holding on and, and waiting. So, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, 
but like i said make sure y'all stay because we got adam pike coming on right after this but to pop it off ronnie james mm. ronnie james man he, he he talked about that he, he is about to enter the nba draft uh he declared for the draft but he's also throwing his name into the transfer portal uh, so he's gonna be able to rem- you know keep his remaining eligibility that he you know has in the NBA. I mean the NCAA. In the NCAA yeah. uh, and so just 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 quick thoughts on that, man. What do you how do you feel about it? Um, you know, a lot of people talking about he's probably not ready, but we also know that you know, a lot of times these guys, everybody that's a great college player is not a great pro, and everybody's a great pro is not a great college player. So what's your thoughts on the whole Brody situation? I think he's it's just a chess move by him and the James family. I honestly think as knowledgeable as LeBron James is by the game of basketball, I don't think he's going to set his son up. Of course, it's Brian's decision, I'll trust me, because he's a right. 18, 19 year old kid. But right. just that family, I don't think LeBron's going to set his son up, or LeBron is going to set himself up to go to the league when he's clearly not ready. And I don't think he's ready. Right. He averaged less than five. He has 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, 2.1 assists last year. That's just not, that's not going to cut it for uh, to be a guard on the next level, because he'll be a guard. He'll be a 6 2, 6 3 guard on the next level. So yeah. I don't think he's gonna cut it. I feel like he needs to kind of do the money based thing. You know, your money base came as a highly title recruit, went to Memphis, he didn't play to his expectations. So he went to Central Michigan and just went to a smaller school and just went there and hooped. That's right. what I think Ronnie James is gonna do personally. I feel like if he goes to a mid-major D1 school, I feel like he's gonna show the flashes he did in high school because he is a great talent and his IQ is he, he is a genuinely great talent, despite who his father is. Mm-hmm. So that's what I think he's gonna do. That's what I think he should do. But I think it's just a chess move by um James Fanish to put his name in the draft pool just to maybe put some pressure on some other teams. Like, hey, if we get Bronny, we may get Braun. But I honestly don't think he's right. right. I think it's a chess move, but I, I think he's gonna stay in college for at least another year, go to a smaller school and get get away from the pressure of LA. Because people don't think his dad plays in LA and he goes to right. USC. See, that's a lot of pressure for an 18-year-old kid. And he was coming off a of cardiac arrest this past summer, too. People so forget like, that, bro. Yeah, just like a full offseason with him being completely healthy, just to get his legs back up and get his win back, he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So that's my take on it. Yeah, I ain't mad at him. Like you said, the, the best thing is like, and maybe I, I misunderstood this growing up. I thought when you declared for the uh, the draft back in the day, bro, like that was it. You couldn't go back. Cut. Yeah, you couldn't go back. But yeah. you know, a lot of times you're hearing now where guys they go in, they go through the full process, see where they at, get some feedback from pro scouts, things like that, and. You know, it's almost like why not do that every single year? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, if there's no, you know, if there's no really negative to it, I don't see a bad thing. You know, so I understand the situation that happened at USC. Um, you know, the coach leaving, you got you know the best player from to put his name into the draft. Um, and like you said, just the, that whole just the likes that comes with USC, even though they ain't really been too much of a a, a, a good school. Still a big like, name. Still a big name. Though. Still a big, big name. name. Historic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Historic the legacy behind that. So uh, I'm with you, man. Put your name in there. See what you got. I don't think he's ready personally myself either. Uh, but he could very well be, a, 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 you know, a great pro coming out. Maybe he, I've seen some people speculate that maybe he wants to, you know, maybe just outright get a two-way contract. Maybe he wants to, you know, be back and forth between, you know, the G League and the big teams where he can learn just how to be a professional. Like he can't – it's Bronny James we're talking about at the end of the day. Like the dude been in the spotlight since he came from Savannah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um yeah you know his dad is lebron james i mean he don't really it's not i don't feel like too much that you can teach him it's just like you say he coming off of i don't i can't call it an injury but like a, a life altering a life altering situation like that's a major thing man yeah so you know that getting healed back up him trusting himself i'm pretty sure it was probably just some thought in his mind like you know if i keep moving maybe something to happen again you know what i'm saying the, it, the yeah. ptsd that can come behind that bro like I, I'm it's not mad at it. It's a lot. So I will say this though: <laughs> if he decide to stay in college, if you follow me on Twitter, and I know a lot of people, <laughs> that, I would love for him to come to Memphis and and potentially we're gonna talk about it in the next news segment. But that guy that they just got, the point guard, uh, PJ Haggerty, uh, amazing point guard. Uh, you, you, you're talking about David Jones potentially coming back next year. If you can get Bronny James added into that mix, bro, I love just his defensive prowess that he brings. You got those other two guys that can score. I'm interested in seeing that. And we all know LeBron is a big Penny fan. So, you know, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Any last thoughts, man? 
Nah, I'm good on them. Shout out, Brunner, bro. We want we want you to be great over here on No Bluffing Podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Make sure y'all comment below. Let us know. Should Bronny stay in school or should he, you know, should he go to the league? What y- what's y'all thoughts on it? Is he ready? We want to hear from y'all in the comments below. Make sure y'all go ahead and drop it. Uh, but next, we got, like I said, I alluded to it. Uh, Memphis gets two uh, commits. Penny ain't playing, bro. He already done started. Uh, he mm-hmm. getting the party started out of that out of that transfer portal, as he always does, man. So uh, if you've been under a rock, the Memphis Tigers did get two commits last week. Uh, P.J. Haggerty from Tulsa, point guard. I think he was a freshman last year. Uh, mm-hmm. Put up some great averages. Guy can score. Uh, he can do a lot on the floor, man. Um, definitely a lot more than the beloved um, <laughs> Ron Quinterly. Um, thank you, man. Uh, you know, thank you for your service, bro. Uh, <laughs> Chris Hayden. Oh, well, Chris Hayden. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll holler at you, man. Uh, Chris but yeah, Hayden, uh... I, ain't, look, I ain't got, look, I ain't got no hate in my body. It's just, you know, <laughs> you go out there and kind of act like you don't care. I don't care either. I, I can't care more than you. That's, that's facts. That's valid. You know, that's valid. So, uh, shout out to, to Penny for going through, you know, going through those uh, handshake lines and recruiting. Like we always make the joke, we see it's a real thing. Uh, and then Dang Danger got like one of the just, just coolest but just weird yeah dang, dang, dang. Yeah. yeah that's but tough. um he can market it for sure man so just what's your thoughts on those two pickups for the uh for the city um uh, and just penny starting to pull off really man with two haymakers in a sense i have a love hate relationship just with the whole like new age of like transfers and portals and I- nil like you yeah. know in one hand i love player empowerment and i think give the players players have been like unrepresented and they haven't got the credit they've been due like for years i feel like right. it gets to a point where i don't think it's benefiting the sport of college basketball as much as people think and like yeah. i love I, I love the pickups let me just say that straight up but i don't think just with penny his success isn't just getting guys through the portal or just getting these highly touted guys like it's hey he has to have a balance you know and i've right. and I've, I've seen people talking about they they thinking pj hattery can kind of be got have the kendra davis effect that he mm-hmm. can Davis out here because they both were high volume scores, high volume point guards coming from right. lower schools. And I hope right. that is the case. But am I just like super just into it, the thought of it after how last season went? No, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Because if you look on paper, I would think on paper, Javon Quinley was a better player coming out of Alabama than PJ Hyder is coming out of um, Tulsa. But you see, kind of see how that ended out, you know? So like, yeah. I'm going to be optimistic and hoping that PJ and Dane represent the team but as we as we as you lose to you can't make guys care you can yeah. bring all these highly touted guys from these That's all these right. different schools but it doesn't matter if they don't buy into the system that penny's preaching and the system in the city that is memphis tennessee right so i i'm not gonna be excited about really anything until i see how these boys really hoop on the floor at least and when they go like to the bahamas like how they playing there like i just want to see them on the seat they really yeah. you can tell if dudes care when they're on the floor or not so that's yep. that's all I want to see. On paper, they look good. I want to see a full care, especially coming yep. off of last season. Yeah. So how how you feel about that? I, I a little bit different, but I but I proceed with caution for the same reason that you said, though. You know what I'm saying? Like you you that you know what? I, I got to pause on that too because some people some people say that that was Penny's like most talented team on paper, and I could see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But that first class that he had, bro. I mean, yeah, they were young, they were freshmen and stuff like that, but. I mean, he got three pros out of that class uh, with yep. Wiseman, Precious, and, and, and you know, doing his thing. Um, you know, things could have probably worked out a little bit better DJ with DJ De- uh, DJ Jeffries. Uh, I wish he could have stayed for sure. Uh, Malco, I don't think he may go pro. We'll see. I mean, he probably gonna throw his name in and see what can happen. Um, but yeah, that just that that initial nucleus of talent that he had. I think if they could have stayed together longer. Mm-hmm. That would have probably been his best one, but you know I can understand the accolades and things. Jordan Brown came here last year. We think laid an egg, double double beast, and man, I don't know what happened. Laid you know, I egg, bro. pray for him because I don't know what the situation was. But yeah, um, you know, I, I say this in, in regards to Haggerty versus JQ. I just feel like with him being younger, number one, you know, JQ kind of bounced around a lot. He had a lot of stuff going on with yeah, him. Yeah, he did. Like that. And you know, he's one of them guys where he's maybe not good enough. Maybe I don't know to make it pro, but he's too good for college basketball. So he's like in the, like basketball purgatory. So I can understand him trying to go out and play for self, but he has selfish guys, bro. He got to build. Or if he if you're gonna run back with this Haggerty guy, and hopefully David Jones comes back, 
you run with them two your main guys and you fill out the rest of that team that's why i said Bronny would be like the perfect compliment because he can be that role player that connected between those two guys but we'll see dang danger i didn't really give him a shout out uh a guy with a high motor uh he just got to get a, you know and my from what i've seen if he can get in better shape he can be a real player uh for them yeah. guys so I'm excited to see what Penny gonna do the rest of this portal, you know, process. Um, he got started early, which is a good thing. He's not waiting till all the scraps are left on the board. So um, make sure y'all put in the comments how y'all feel about it. Are you happy? Are you kind of just like uh <laughs> yeah. you're indifferent, you don't really care? Let us know how you feel in the comments about those two commits. Uh, and the last one we're gonna end on. We popped it off a few weeks with it. Yes, sir. Gotta go ahead and revisit it, man. The J. Cole respond i'm gonna let you take it because i know how you feel about this so go ahead brother well everybody don't know if you've been living on the rack over the past two two and a half weeks kendrick <laughs> k dot lamar wanted to be the big bear wolf and go at jermaine cole and drake drizzy drake too but we ain't gonna talk about that that's a whole different thing yeah um yeah he jumped he dropped like that with metro booming and people's going crazy on verse he put on the stuff that he said but our boy Jermaine Cole unexpectedly dropped the whole project. Not just a diss. He dropped the whole project on whole a 12 project. song, a whole 12 song called Might Delete Later. And it has divided Twitter. It's divided hip hop purists, as I would say. Mm -hmm. But I believe J. Cole did just what he needed to do, honestly. He threw a few warning shots out just to tell people, hey, I'm here. I'm not scared yep. of Kendrick. Yeah. And he's going to be fine. Like, especially the diss was called Seven Minute Drill. But it was only three minutes and thirty seconds long. So clearly, there's another part of that. So people, people are getting, people are getting switched up in that. Maybe because I'm a Draco Pierce, so I know the the backstory behind the whole seven minute drill thing he does. But people get hung up on that. He dissed him on Pi. He dissed him on Three Hundred One. He dissed Future on a song. He dissed he dissed Travis Scott on a song. People are really sleeping how good J Cole is. How if he really wants to turn up he can and this yep. this was just to show people hey i still got more in the tank but y'all don't y'all really want to do this you feel yep. me and that's how i said i feel like the whole project was a pretty decent project i don't mm -hmm. think that this was the main thing that i got over because i'm a j cole fan but i understand how other people want to just do the beef between k dot right. and that's just but for me personally i enjoyed the whole project you know i don't yep. Yeah, it's fun. The diss stuff is fun, but like that's not it's not is that mean my main thing I go to listen to a project like that? No. Right. But you know, I'm telling J. Cole. I think when he said that, when J. Cole said I can't remember the song that he at first he was behind him, but now he has a lead and it's abundant. I agree yep. with him. <laughs> I agree. Seven minute drill. Yeah, it was seven minute drill. Yes. Yep. He said yep. first. Yes, he admitted that. Yeah, I was behind you for a little, but now I have yep. a lead and you ain't catching me. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I feel like Seven minute drill and seven minute drill and the whole album just showed that it's levels to this now. J. Cole's operating on a different level, but that's that's my spiel. You feel me? Team Dreamville for life. You feel me? Ah! <laughs> hey, you, have you been watching the the, the Dream Fest or Dream? What's it? Dreamville Fest? Dream, yeah, Dreamville Fest. Yeah, watching? yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough so far. Shout, shout yeah. out JID. He just dropped a new song. JID. I love him. And he and if y'all don't know, my tattoo narrow foe is in Dreamville font. If y'all don't, if y'all didn't uh, catch that, no, that's so, dope. Oh, yeah, he a real Dreamville, Dreamvillian over there. Yeah, for real. Like I wanted to get my, <laughs> my I wanted to get my front in Dream. You see with the line all that. So yeah, this if y'all honest, if y'all want to question my commitment and my dedication to this whole thing, you can't look at my arm. You feel me? So that's that's me on that. Man, man I'm gonna tell you, bro. When he first dropped, I, I'm I'm one of them type of people that at 11 o'clock because I'm in Central Time, 11 p.m. on uh, Thursday night, I'm checking my Apple Music to see what done dropped. Yeah, and I saw a song Seven Minute Drill and a new song thing, and then I saw a different fun. I said, Oh, he dropped the album. Let me go listen to this first, though. I'll just mm -hmm. say this, bro. I was very <laughs> happy from what I heard from <laughs> from Cole. Because if yeah. you listen to the first time we talked about this beef, what did I say about Kendrick Lamar? He was born. And what else did I say? What else did you say? Overrated. Overrated, was, yeah. He was more nervous. So, <laughs> I was so glad that Cole said your first album His was whatever. Was, 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 your last one was, was terrible. Tragic. And the second, your second one was, album, they was what they gassed it. It was born, but, but they, they gassed, gassed it. Man, thank you. <laughs> yeah. J. Cole said it's right, but when I said I'm I'm great, <laughs> yeah. he's like, whatever. Um, I thought he went at him, like you said, gave him some pow pow, some real good just shots on there. I love to hear what I heard from him on that. But I'll be honest with you, bro. I'm a big Joe Budden podcast fan. 
Mm, and okay. uh, me, he was me going Anthony, crazy. Yeah. Man, me, me, and Anthony Sane was just texting about it, and, and <laughs> man, Button will definitely change your perspective sometimes. Yes, he will. He's, he's very persuasive. He's very persuasive, man. He's a very persuasive. Like, he was like, man, get this little soft, soft ass diss out of here, man. What is it? I was like, oh, he kind of got a point, like. When he said the whole um, New Jack City meme with with yeah um, with the with the gun pointing at yeah with Wesley Snipes uh, crying he didn't want to yeah. I'm like, like and you right why I, Jacob, why I, why are you talking like that yeah he did say you my brother and I, I don't really want to do this he did say that I was like no do it yeah. <laughs> do it stop being nice coach please stop. <laughs> stop like what are we doing it's like we playing with what's the thing that used to be on the uh, infomercials they was like the inflatable boxing like gloves. like the boxing they, gloves yeah sock em boppers just like they fighting with sock em boppers. <laughs> That might be the title of this episode. Like, why are we just fighting with talking about this? Yeah, like, take them off, bro. Take the gloves off and let's really fight. Like, what are we talking about? Um, but I'm glad it's good for the sport of rap. I'm glad it's not going to, well, I'm hoping and praying. I don't think it's going to get to something, like, actually negative or, like, you know, violent or nothing. I think it's all yeah. just for the, the sport of rap, which is always good. It's something that we've needed, you know, especially the last 10 years with drill rap, everything. Yeah. Usually, if you say something in a rap song in the last 10 years, you meant it, you did it, or you about to do it. Yeah, you know, so I'm cool. <laughs> my, whole, my whole thing is like J. Cole did say one of the songs that he dropped code. I mean, cut dot drops one verse average of 30 years. He dropped four albums in 12 years. Yeah, he if, if Kendrick takes a minute to respond, to it, it's a J. Cole two two weeks response to this. If yep. it takes K dot a month or more to respond, then that's proving J. Cole's point right there. Yep. And that's what I that's what I want to see. Yeah, it wasn't just light the flames up, he gotta respond right now. Right. But if right. he takes a long time. I feel like people say, oh, K-Dot won, won round one. I think this the response is how long his response is going to take to take who won round one. Because if he takes three, five, because J. Cole's right. He, he's very he's very sparingly. And that's how J. Cole used to be. But now he's trying to reinvent himself. Now he's yeah. everywhere now. So yeah. if it takes him months to respond to this, or if you don't even say nothing else to Drake or Cole about the whole thing. Oh, it'll be a waste I of time. Say, I'll be mad if, if nothing else comes from him. It's like, why did y'all even start? You know what I'm Why saying? did Kendrick start? Because J. Cole started with the nice stuff. He's the yeah, yeah. and Dot feel disrespect. He's like, oh, y'all, this ain't no big three. I'm the yeah. one. You feel me? So if it takes Dot, yeah. I give Dot, I give Dot a month. If it take, I give him a month. If, it, if he takes longer than a month to respond, then he's tweaking. Bro, my birthday is a month. If he ain't talked about nothing in a month, I'm moving on to something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> you giving up? Just, just save it, bro. At this point, if you if it take you that, just save because that yeah, I can't be hype on that. Bye. Back uh Thanks. by Kendrick, go do something. Go go uh go play a flute like Andre three thousand <laughs> or something. I don't want to hear that. Just, just go, on. go. Mm -hmm. on. But yeah, tell us in the comments, man, how y'all feel? Who you know who won round one in your eyes? Love to hear from you. Uh, you know, just your thoughts on it. Uh, but yeah, man, that is the no bluffing news. Um, uh, we are gonna go ahead and jump into i don't know what just happened with this the, the sound my bad y'all uh but we're gonna go ahead and jump into the no bluffing player of the week because i want to get to this first segment uh i'm excited to talk about this uh with adam pike like i said make sure y'all stay tuned we got that coming on the other side of the break mm -hmm. no bluffing player of the week yes sir i want to get y'all guess who do y'all think the no bluffing player of the week is y'all drop just in the comments real quick drop, drop in the comments <laughs> who y'all think or make y'all prediction because this shit really only be on one answer honestly if y'all really watching, if y'all really watching the games like we are, yeah, I know, so I know it's rough. I know it's yeah, rough know right it's rough. now. But we, we like, we like fifty games. We like twenty seven and fifty right now, something like that. We, we good God. down there. Good God, but hey, did you? But, oh hey. my God, oh my God, I know we, <laughs> bro. Let, I, this real, real quick before we, before we get this man his flowers. Yeah, I want to say that that Grizzly seven seventy sixers game. Mm -hmm. it had to be the worst basketball game I think <laughs> that I have watched. Damn near ever. Ooh, that's a high. That's a high order, bro. That's a high order. If, if you were in the building for that game, or you sat on the couch and watched that game, or you sat in your car, the bathroom, on the toilet, watching that game on your phone, I don't care where you watch it. If you did watch that game, salute, salute. and clap, clap to you because that was god off. Um, Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Go ahead. I was I was watching. I was keeping my eye on the game because it was Mark. But I was watching WrestleMania last night also because WrestleMania Saturday was going on. So yeah. uh, if Grizz Twitter want to crucify me, I'll take it. Nah, but it's WrestleMania, bro. Like I was, watching, I was still keeping up with the game and the scores and all that. And I was yeah. 
keeping up, but my main <laughs> was on WrestleMania last. <laughs> and the Final Four was happening, but I didn't watch the Final Four. I was about four, to say, you had the Final yeah. Four going through. It was a yeah. lot, bro. So lot to watch uh, Xavier Simpson or, or... Who is that? Where did he come from? I posted on my Twitter. I'm like, who is number two and why is his name Simpson? And where when I try to keep up when we sign people. Where did this man come from? I... News I have a good like who these guys are, like they G League guys. I had no idea who they was. I was like, why is he getting 15 20 minutes a game? I was like, who is this dude? Bro, I didn't know. So I got I got home last night and I'm pulling up like just highlights in who he was. He did two hook shots in that game, and it pissed me off because I'm like, why is a dude that's (laughs) that's minus six foot doing hook shots? From that's the free throw thing. line, that that's his thing. That's his thing, the and G that's League, his thing. Apparently, he does them in the G League all the time. And this one move that I did like that I saw, he does kind of like a like a Euro step, but he stops on the last stops. Step yeah, he time. stops. He delays it. Yeah, it's a delay. It gave me like some Sam Young vibes. Like you remember Sam Young used to have, yeah, like, of course, the, yeah. Like, where he go all the way up. It gave me that kind of vibe. So I was like, okay, that's a dope move. Like people should do that more. But the hook shot, bro, you are tripping at six foot or less. <laughs> you like, are tweaking. what is happening? <laughs> you yeah. are tweaking, my guy. But enough on that sorry ass game, bro. That was <laughs> god awful. Uh the player of the week, if you don't know by now, man, it's I got trip triple J. big 13. You feel me? Big 13, Jerry Jackson Jr. Man, had an amazing week last week. Amazing, amazing showing. Um, I don't think he's gonna play for the rest of the season because I just knew. That he set out that back to back on the first game to play on Mark's retirement. I got a beef with y'all for nobody playing. That really kind of pissed me off. Yeah, that like, kind of that kind of that kind of made me mad. Like it's Mark, bro. Yeah. Come on, you got you got show respect so, to be Spain. Yeah, like we had to watch the worst game ever to get to the ceremony. That was come on, y'all. But um, yeah. other than that, he had an amazing week. Thirty five points showing, I believe, against the Bucks. No, bro, he, he had, no, he had, he had forty against Detroit and he had thirty five against okay. Milwaukee. There yeah. we go. Uh, so thirty seven point five on the week. Yeah, thirty-seven point five on a week. Uh, and he played. He he got to sixty-five. I feel like he's not gonna play the rest of you because he got to sixty-five games. He can get an award now. He can get an All Defensive Team award or a Second Team right. All Defensive Team award. Um, I doubt he's not gonna be All NBA. But I feel like the the uh, the the front office say, okay, let's get you to sixty-five games. You you've mm-hmm. done your thing, and right. he's gonna sit around for a year. But great week by Trip. Great potentially final week or final stretch of the season for Trip. I love the fact that he goes at Giannis the way he does. Like. Every, every time. time, every time he sees Yana, he's sat, he's he's foaming at the mouth. It seems like, <laughs> and like, and I love that he's that. That shows that Trip is building that dog mentality that we've all been that we want to see with him. Like we question right. his motor in the past for some reason. When that seven foot Greek guy comes into Memphis, or we go to yep. Milwaukee, that boy he puts his hard hat on and he he comes to play. Um, and even even the game against Detroit, like those type of games, you supposed to have forty against Detroit. Like no, 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 no disrespect to Jalen Duran. We love Jalen Duran over here. Former Memphis Tiger. We would love to see you on the Grizzlies one year, one day. Please come on, Detroit. Give him us. But like, <laughs> you should, you should be cooking him and the whole Detroit team. So this is just, this is just giving more things for us to see for trip. When everyone gets back next year, we're gonna be dealing with a different trip. We, I don't want to see deferring trip anymore. He's shown this year that he can hold his arm being a number one option because he's been a number one option most of the year. He's got his bumps and bruises this year. He's got his whoops with ah. Uh, now I, I'm seeing uh, he's seeing double and triple teams dang near every night now. So next year when everybody back, I want to see this. Of course, his volume's gonna go down a little bit because he's gonna have other guys on the floor. But I want to see this aggressiveness throughout the whole year. And yep. I love, I love, I give Trip. If honestly, I'll give Trip besides Gigi, I'll give Trip my MVP of this year. Like I know we, that's probably gonna be another show we do when the season's actually over. Our in a year awards and stuff, yeah. But for me, I'll give Trip probably my MVP of the year. Real talk, you got to. Uh, him just pushing through what a disaster of a season it's been, bro. Record setting, uh, I think we set the record again last night. We tied with Detroit the, the when we played them. Uh, I think them bringing Timmy Allen on actually gave them the record, I believe. I didn't see it, I didn't hear it, but I mean, I'm just thinking in my head, it's got to be. Uh, the, 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 the biggest 32 sword, guys, yeah, 32 yeah, guys. yeah, 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 we played 32 guys. yeah. We beat our own record from the 2015 2016 season, god awful, man. Uh, Trim, we're just he, crazy. <laughs> just we're shout just out crazy. to him for staying in the foxhole, bro. Uh, yeah. like I said, I really would have wished he would have got last night and said, uh, that would have been special. Um, just to you know, I think he could have probably helped him get a win, honestly. Uh, but it is what it is, man. He He's stuck in the foxhole. Uh, and reinforcements is coming next year. So that's what I'm excited to see them guys get a summer. 
uh, together, hopefully revise some things based off what you saw. And because of what we're about to talk about with Adam, I think we can probably find some ways to actually implement and give him uh, just more opportunities next year with those other two guys next to him. I may even throw Gigi in there as well. So uh, that's all we got, man, for the no bluffing player of the week. Like you said, shout out the trip. We are going to go ahead and get to our first commercial break because we got some exciting stuff to talk about on the other end. Uh, so we're going to shut up and uh, we will see y'all in just a second. Y'all go ahead, subscribe if you ain't, follow us if you ain't, mm -hmm. and we'll see y'all on the other side. And we say all this, and now there's already talk. They haven't even done the 12th team. And Kenny, they're, already, again. they're already talking about expanding it to 14 in 2026. I'm down for every bit of it. I am too. Expand it. Keep going. Kenny, have you seen what the proposal is for the expanded to 14 three guaranteed sec three guaranteed big 10 that's six two ace acc two big 12 so now you're at 10 and then one g5 representative three at large, three at large. top two it's gonna be ACC, that way anyway top. is it i mean it's gonna be that way anyway so why not yeah likely i don't mind it if it gets the sec the big 10 the big 12 the, all those power conferences on board, do it. Why not? As long as we still get a shot. Yeah, I think as long as any G5 still has a chance, right? Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Even with all that joking about what I just said, like Memphis is still top talented team in the conference. They're not one, they're two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, would you be shocked to see them? I don't really care if they went out, but I, I would not be surprised to see this team go in the tournament four games and four nights win the thing. Win they the have the talent thing. to do so. It's, yeah. never, it's never been done uh, at Memphis. It's hard. Um, mm -hmm. That 2005 team with Darius Washington was trying to do it, needed yeah. to win the conference tournament to make the NCAA tournament. Made Darius made Washington the misses the free throws, mm -hmm. but that was four and four days. You've got this situation now. Yeah, Memphis is talented enough. There's no question about it, but especially when you consider the fact that there's a good chance it feels like Malcolm Dandridge is not going to play mm -hmm. against East Carolina. If you don't have him the rest of the season, it does leave you extremely thin in the front court. And so making this run, you know, running the table the rest of the regular season, winning what we think probably going to be four games in four days, gonna be, you're going to probably have to do it with about like six guys. Yeah. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Yo, 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 we back, we back, we back, man. We are back on the other side of the break. We got Adam Pike joining the show, man. I'm super excited for this segment. Uh, like I said, if you are not, before we even get started, make sure y'all give this man a follow on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Elon Musk's mm -hmm. app. Um, <laughs> Grizzlies, Mr. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Elon. Uh, Grizzlies fam on Twitter, man. Uh, again, amazing work uh, that he does over there. Um, a lot of times it'd be in the middle of the game. I'd be like, damn, how you get this shit out here so fast? <laughs> he <laughs> edited it quick. I'm like, dang, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my mind don't work that fast. I mean, he done he done pick up the play and and, and just the action and all that. I'm like, dude, yeah. Dude I, I, hit, I so hit Adam right, right. I, I hit Adam up a couple um weeks, maybe a couple months ago, and I was like, Man, look, I gotta get you on the show, bro. I don't know when the time is gonna be right. We're gonna figure it out. I wanted to wait till we got our whole you know rebate brand and thing like that, uh taken care of. Which we obviously got, you know, everything looking a little bit better now. You know, spice stuff for y'all, spice up our life, spice up your life a little bit. Uh, but I'm excited to talk this through, man. So before we do anything, Adam, your first time on the podcast, I'm excited, bro. Um, just tell the people a little bit about you, what got you into basketball, Grizzlies, uh, being a Grizzly fan, stuff like that. Just introduce yourself a little bit, uh, so everybody that watches No Bluffing uh, can kind of just get a feel for you know who you are and just you know how you became a fan. Yeah, thanks both for having me. Uh, Greer asked me to go on his show six months ago, and uh, I never really got back to him, so he might not be happy about Ah, that. DG. Ah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> ah boy, we got you. <laughs> Shout out to Daniel Greer, the Greer's 901 podcast, man, for sure, for sure. Uh, so I've been a Grizzlies fan since they're in Vancouver. So I was like, uh, like 11 years old when they moved, so I was a kid. But uh, so I actually live in Toronto, Canada, not a mm, Raptor okay. fan, though. No, yeah. Okay, so uh. Yeah, that's why I became a fan. And then when they moved to Memphis, I just stuck with them. That's what I did. Some rough what? years. Some rough yeah. years. But. 
for sure. Wait, just because I'm curious, what time is it in Toronto right now? Because you're taking a different. Oh, we're an hour ahead. Oh, okay, so it's not uh, that bad then. Okay, no, 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 it's not that bad for sure. So you, y'all on the same time? Yeah, me, yeah, me and you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, Chris. Yeah, Chris emailed me at three a.m. last night, and then he's up at eight thirty. It's built different. (laughs) Chris liked that. Oh, it's that that, that daddy schedule, bro. That daddy schedule got him new, new baby schedule got him. You get no sleep at all. That's what's up, man. Uh, I love to hear like just the stories. Um, and, and like you say, it started uh, in Vancouver, so that is a little bit different. Uh, but just talk about. I want to ask you this uh, because I did know you was from Canada. Um, talk about just kind of how it was in Canada uh, when the Raptors won that championship. Because I mean, I was hoping the Grizzlies was gonna get one before the Raptors did, but you know, ah, uh, we yeah. we lost that battle uh, <laughs> with one of the Grizzly players at that. Well, actually, yeah. two, two, two yeah. Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, just talk about how it was up uh, uh, in Canada, bro, around that time. Well, I didn't like it. Uh, almost Man. all my friends are Raptors fans, so I never hear the end of that. But yeah. uh, no, I was here, or uh, so uh, I didn't live in Toronto at the time, but I was here for the conference finals when they beat the Bucks. So they were down 2 mm-hmm. 0 and then came back and won four in a row. So that was crazy. But uh, mm-hmm. I remember watching the videos after when they won the finals. Got like someone pulled like a tree planter out there downtown. Oh, it looked like a good time. And the, the parade was the parade was crazy too. Yeah, man. Mark gave us a memorable moment. Yeah. I don't. I mean, that man was out there just. He was going crazy. He was having time. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I'd be if I want to change. <laughs> no, nah, see, no, we we ain't hate. We do the same thing. Man, I imagine that's how he was after his uh, retirement celebration. Uh, for sure. Uh, that dude know how to party. It was some of the stories. I don't, they didn't get to show them. I probably on the TV screen, but during the game, they had like these little uh, storytelling moments where they had Mike telling the story. Zach was telling the story. I think uh, Dylan Brooks told a story, and one of the story they was talking about uh, at Mark's wedding, where they all was just at their party, and Zebo took over the DJ booth and had the party pumping. And by the end of the party, they was all fully suited. From the wedding, jumping in the pool, just turned up about eight in the morning. I said, "Oh, yeah, Mark is on a different level, bro." Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that Spaniard, it's that Spanish, <laughs> it's that Spanish pride. You feel me? Like something different, something. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. At eight o'clock. I, nah, I, I wouldn't have made it that long. Uh, nah. Sorry. But um, w- the reason why we got Adam on here, man, like I said, he he breaks down film really, really well. Um, and I just want to kind of give a visual of him kind of talking through some of these things. And so w- what I tasked Adam with was kind of pointing out some of his favorite plays uh, that he's seen, some of his favorite sets that this team has kind of ran throughout the season uh, to where we can just kind of talk through uh, what he likes about it, some of the things that he may not like about the offense, and then some of the things that he would want to see, like just implemented more from based off what his research shows him uh, of what would help the team. Uh, maximizing the talent, because y'all know me. Like, I <laughs> – I be on Taylor Jenkins' ass, like white on rice, like like Anthony Sainz say, like wet pampers. Like I don't let it go, um, and it's just because I know the talent that this team has. Uh, and me and Adam, we had a, a back and forth one time. All respect, all love about Taylor Jenkins. It was actually pretty funny, um, and we had that. But at the end of the day, I think it all and, and Grizzly fans as a whole, we always come back to one main goal, no matter who it is. No matter what it is, the way that we get there, we all want the Grizzlies to have a championship parade on Bill Street. Uh, and so, like I said, I respect this guy's opinion uh, to the moon, man, uh, with his knowledge of, of, of breaking this down. So we're going to kind of go uh, into a couple different sets, if y'all don't mind, and just ride it out with us, man. Let us know kind of how y'all feel about this, just with break it down. So I'm going to start off with the first one. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of let you go, uh, Adam, just kind of break it down. If you need me to stop, pause, play back. Whatever you need me to do, I'm at your service. I'm your engineer at this point, uh, so you just let me know what you need. But we're going to start with um, – which is um, – you know what? Let me be quiet because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to let Adam break this down. So I'm going to go ahead and play the first one, let it rock so y'all can see. And then, Adam, you can just kind of take it from there, bro. Uh, however you feel, and you just, you just go right ahead. This first chance day will be up after the game Wednesday night. Bane. Bango. Desmond Bain and Desmond Bain. Harden with six. Everything from the free throw lines. Jaron scooping, wow. scoring. Okay, what are we so looking yeah, at, Adam? Yeah, the first one. So you get two different plays there. Uh, one was a handoff for Bain, and one was uh, a screen for Jaron. So 
This is starting in one four flat is what it's called. So you get four players along the baseline and then you get Jaren at the top. So you can see it right there. Uh, basically it's good for isolations. Uh, so, you know, they used to run this with Jaw too. I know Pacers run this with Halliburton all the time. But here we get Jaren running it. So in the first clip, you had Bain going and receiving a DHO or a dribble handoff. Uh, so what he's doing there, uh, his defender isn't really guarding him. He's not paying attention. It looks like uh, Bain's not involved in the play. But then he comes up right through the gut. So right through the middle. That's why it's called guts. Uh, gets the DHO, and he's basically wide open from the screen and DHO from uh, jo or from Jaren. So this is a good, this is a really good play, but I like what they pair it with. So what they pair it with is the next clip, and this is called under, or it's inverted pick and roll. So it starts the exact same, but then uh, Luke was really guarded by, I think that's Samir Coffey. So he was being top locked, face guarded, really wasn't going to get the ball there. So what he did in that situation is set a back screen on Zubac, and Jaren had a clear lane to the basket because now uh, instead of Zubac being the low man or the rim protector, you got Amir Coffey, who he's not used to that role. So uh, <laughs> it was a little bit of a little bit of an under alley oop. It looked a little awkward. Jaren always looks a little awkward, but uh, a very effective play. Yeah, yeah. And then so okay. this is the one four version, but they also have a five out, uh, which is all all five players be on the perimeter. Looks like a regular pick and roll, but instead of Jaren screening, it's someone screening for Jaren. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, this is one of the ones that you would advocate for them to use more, or is this just like one of your favorites that you see them run, period, as far as a sit? So this is one of my favorite sets using Jaren and then a shooter, because you saw it was with Bane. It was with uh, Luke. They did run it with, like, Pereira and Laravia the other day, and it went awful. But uh, you know, those are two, <laughs> two questionable players. Uh, so I really like this one because it uses Jaren's strength and then it uses the shooter's strength too. Um, gotcha. and because there's different reads out of it, right? You, the defense doesn't exactly know what's going to happen on the play. Uh, mm -hmm. so it is kind of, it looks like the other players aren't involved, but you'll see like when there's gap help. So you'll see either Harden or, uh, I think Kawhi was in that clip too. If you see them help off their man. They can also pass it out. So there was one play where it was Bane and Jaren running the same thing. Bane got the handoff, mm -hmm. but his man was on his ass. So he passed out to Gigi. Gigi was wide open because there was gap help or help in the lane, and Gigi got the three point. So there's other stuff you can do too. You can do like a, if you see there, there's Aldama and Laravia on the weak side. Uh, like Aldama could set a hammer screen for Laravia, and Laravia could come up and he'd be open for a three point or two. So that's why I like nice. it. Nice, nice, nice. So we're going to move to this second one, which um got coming up here in just a second. Um, just what, what, what's your thoughts on this play as I get it pulled up? Um, is it something that you like, something you, you know, want to see them run more? Or is it something that you want to take away? Like, what's your thought on that? Yeah, so this is, this is the pistol five. Shot. So basically what's going to happen, that was out of horns, but uh, I like it mm -hmm. more with like five out spacing. Um, so again, five players be on mm -hmm. the perimeter, but uh, it's a pistol action or 21 action. So, you know, they've been running this for 60 years, but the tweak here and uh, teams like Sacramento run it, uh, you know, heat run stuff like this is Bane is going to get the ball. So he's going to do a little out screen and then he's going to give it to Jaron and Jaron has a lot of options here. So Bane can either, uh, he can throw and chase. So he can go get the ball, get it uh, towards the baseline, and then go, you know, alley-oop if that option's there. Jaren can keep it. And again, like Jaren and Iso, that's a really, really good player to have, especially at his size. Um, and then Jaren has a lot of options too, so he's yeah. got to read it properly. So again, because it looks like the other three players aren't involved, but they can be. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Jaren is the dribble handoff option. He can keep it, but once he keeps it, he can go. He can score. Or at the top, you got I think that's Ivy, and he's guarding Vince. If mm -hmm. Ivy was a little closer to guarding Jaren, Jaren could do another handoff, or he could pass it out to Vince. Vince is wide open. Uh, and then there's there's other stuff too. So Vince at the top, if he screened for Bane instead of Bane cutting baseline, he could cut towards uh, the weak side sideline, and he could receive a flare screen. Uh, 
that's a play that they used to run a lot for Jaws to like uh, to kind mm-hmm. of decoy an ISO situation for him. And they ran it for Bane once this year. You know, Bane's a much better shooter, so I really like that. Um, you know, and they they yeah. ran this uh, like Bud ran this when Jenkins was with them with the Hawks, so they're used to it. But I like that it's five out. I always almost always want five out spacing, and uh, you know, it uses your two best players. That's my favorite part about it. But the, and you can easily run that with Jaw. Yeah, you can easily run this uh, like Jaw passing the ball. Jaw Jaw's a really really good cutter. And one of my favorite things that the Grizzlies do is. Uh, is like kind of hiding the little sets in there for him to get a cut or to get an isolation after. Uh, and they've been doing it with mm. uh, GG this year too. So you could run this with GG, Jaw, Bane. Like they, getting your two best players together is always what I want to do. So anybody, what you're saying, like with it being five out, where Jaren is in that corner, you really could put anybody right there. Is that what you like? You would recommend, or would you run it that way, or would you always run it primarily with Jaren? Because I know you know Jaw can get to the rim at will, but. Would you put anybody else in that spot to kind of run Jaren's spot? Well, yeah, good question. So the pistol five part, the five is the center. So uh, that's you. what makes it more unique. So, yeah, you can run this. Uh, you could do like a handoff. Like uh, it's called zoom action. So you have a handoff okay. for jaw and then he gets a screen after and he could easily get there. But uh, use that for Jaren or uh, Clark too because Clark's really good isolation scorer as well. Uh, they're running it for like – Steven Adams. Steven Adams was okay at it. He's way slower than Jaron, though. He doesn't move in space like him. Uh, they ran it for Tillman. Didn't love it for Tillman, but isolation scores, people with hops like Brandon Clark, I think it's a really good option. I see that, and gotcha, my gotcha. question is, like, as the Grizzlies offense, we we do a lot of DHOs, a lot of kind of put people in space and let them create. Do you think that mm-hmm. offense kind of suits better from what we're doing, or do you think kind of like a pass and cut pace and run type offense like you see like Golden State running or Sacramento those type of teams with our personnel do you think that's the best way to go about it or do you think we should maybe in the upcoming seasons kind of switch it up a little bit more yeah so this is a big Sacramento Kings play Sacramento runs this all the time with uh Sabonis and Fox Mm -hmm. uh I really like this one I love more egalitarian so you know I job pick and rolls not my favorite Mm, but uh okay yeah, I really like, you know, getting him moving and then Jaw can get the ball like off a cut. I really like that kind of stuff. Um, right now, the personnel is a little weak to be running DHOs, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, for sure. Steven Adams, Steven Adams, biggest player on the court. almost Just set them screens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he hands off a ball and a brick wall. But uh, so I think yeah. that's the next clip I included. I think it's important part. Um that when they look for a front court player, I think uh, playmaking slash DHO hub is gonna be very important to pair with uh, Jaron. Gotcha. Good question, Evan. Because I, I was thinking about that too myself. Like I know we're gonna talk about that a little bit at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I love the passing. I love the the, the spacing and, and moving with the quickness that we have. That was that was a good call out for sure. Yeah, it's just I just feel like and I know Adam has pointed this out. I know he's talked about this before. We we really we rely on twelve and Jai a little bit too much. Just do that high screen row action. Way too much. Whether we only do it enough for trip, but if that's either Steve-O, when Steve was here or Tillman or BC, we, we rely on that too much for that to be our offense, especially in late game situations. So I guess Adam and I, I know you probably already kind of know what you're gonna say. Do you think we should rely on these sets more a little bit more in late game situations instead of just giving Jai and Dez the ball and telling them just to go make a play? You know, or do you think or you think just kind of like a time and place for those type of things? Yeah, that's one of my pet peeves. Almost every basketball team does this. So you'll see, uh, like Celtics, they get flamed for their end of game sets where they just, you know, uh, called uh, called Tatum, which uh, I hate, hate <laughs> sets. Uh, I'm okay with the sometimes. Celtics, yeah. I remember, like last year, there was a game against the Jazz where they were winning, and the last three plays they just run like uh, they ran uh, high pick and roll with Jaron in the dunker spot, and Jaw just went to the basket all three times and. Didn't get any of them because it was really, really poor spacing. So that's the kind of stuff that really frustrates me. Yeah, yeah. No, so for sure. I understand it's a little difficult to implement because, uh, you know, the game's a little slower at the end of the clock. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, one of my biggest pet peeves is when teams deviate from their the process. They've been running the whole game, and then they go into ISO. Well, I think, and I bet you agree with you, I know both of y'all will probably, it's, it comes down to discipline still. Like, if it's been, I understand, like you said, the game slows down a lot more when the, when the shot clock gets, when possessions are way more valuable and the shot clock is way more prudent. 
but still has been working. The point of the is to update is to still get a bucket. So if you're still running things that can probably mm-hmm. get you a bucket, yes, we have playmakers with Jai and Dez and Trip that can just make plays on their own. But what's the most efficient way to get a bucket is running these type of sets that you're talking about right now. So I still think it's a coaching mm-hmm. thing. I still still come along with the discipline of the players. Who's the leader on the floor? Ja. He why can't he just call a play black? Okay, we still running a pinch split. We run the horns action, double horns action, have two shooters on the weak side. He can still call things like that. So I think it's still a discipline thing, you know, more than just like a Taylor Jenkins. I still is a Taylor Jenkins team. I still think the discipline with the players that they had to have mental keys when especially in late game situations. Yeah, I think it depends on the game too. Like yeah. uh John, John against, smart. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Against the Bucks, like uh, you know, Jaron was killing us, so they just ran Jaron pick and roll, uh, yeah. like the last five possessions or whatever. Yeah, that th- that's a situation I like to see it. Or uh, uh, John Morant when he came back against the Pelicans, I think that was the right call. <laughs> yeah, he was let him ice crazy. Code, do five out, let him get. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's different situation. It's definitely a game by yeah, game. Yeah, it depends for sure. on the situation, but. Yeah. You got to stick to your process. I yeah, think. I think I think in playoff series, I feel like that's when we need it the most. Honestly, yeah, regular season games, um, that's one thing. But in the playoffs, like in that Lakers series, our late game execution was terrible, and against the Warriors, the, our late game execution was terrible. So I feel like this were yeah. so many things that you're talking about right now, and that you're greatly pointing out could help more because I feel like Lando's here is just okay. Ja, I'm Ja, beat your man. That's that's what a lot of the right. plays are down the stretch. Right. And I feel like some things you're talking about could really help us, you know, especially in the play. If we, if we really trying to go to a deep playoff run. Yeah. And that's my thing. Like, Ja, he 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 prides himself in being a point guard. I remember he made that claim uh, sitting down with Chris Haynes. It was probably one of my favorite Ja interviews ever because it was a brand new way behind the ears Ja that's coming into the NBA before he even got drafted. I want to get. I want to see him really get to that. Like, I'm not saying he's gonna be the Chris Paul or LeBron James, but I know he has that mind. I want to see him, like you was talking about, Evan, like take control of the game more, uh, more so than just what I know I can do, which is get past my man and probably go dunk on somebody. Um, that's gonna be the evolution <laughs> that I feel like to the next level for sure. So, um, but we got this third one now. On this third one, Adam, what, what's your thoughts on this one? Because I, I, I believe I'm with you on this one. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add it in and play it now uh, so people can kind of get a feel for it. Three games played for Keldon Johnson. Throws off the curl. Drop off. Biombo. Nicely done. So I picked the uh, pick scoring Mac set. Biombo side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I picked, I picked oh, uh, play one, the play that scored. Three games played for Keldon Johnson. There yeah, so I picked plays that scored. They're all a little, uh, you know, uh, picked and chosen through. But so this this is one I really like. It gets a lot of players involved. It's called pinch, or uh, other teams probably call it elbow because he's at the elbow. He's at the free throw line. Um, so basically, it's a playmaking set, again, for a front court player. So Biombo, never really a good uh, playmaker. Uh, when they ran it with Steven Adams, it was very effective. Uh, this year, it's been a terrible set. Uh, they ran it with Clark. They ran, or sorry, they ran it with Tillman, Biombo, obviously a little bit of Jaron, and almost every time it's uh, it's been bad. But so the alignment mm-hmm. is it's going to be Biombo at the elbow, and then you have two players at the top of the key, and then two corners. So from here, there's lots of options. This is a split, so you get uh, you get Bane going right to the basket, and then he's not open. But Rose is open on the DHO, and they're playing in drop, so it's hard to get. He gnashes, and Biombo gets the bucket. Uh, other option could be Bane and Rose uh, set screens for the player in the corner. I think it was Aldama. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so it was Aldama. So he could come up and get the handoff, or uh, if he's open on the perimeter, Biombo passes it out to him. Easy three pointer. Um, and then the last one they have is if Rose screened for Bane instead and Bane came and got the handoff that's like a like top zoom action so basically you're just it's a screen into a handoff that's the important part and uh then Bane would have the same lane to the basket so lots of options out of this again uh but for me personnel issue so a little bit with the last one too you really need to get a playmaker in the front court with uh with Jaron if you're gonna run that uh like two bigs because uh, it opens up the playbook so much. Mm-hmm. And I think Clark is an option. At the beginning of the season, they talked about Aldama using this uh, in Spain. 
I have to go back and watch that because uh, Aldama's first game back, they did use him in this, but they haven't used him a lot in the, this season in these pinch sets. And uh, I'm not, not sure I, I would true. love that option. Yeah, I'm not sure I would love that <laughs> option, but uh, they did like it in Spain, so I got to go back and watch that. Yeah, so, yeah I, I've been on really the podcast like. talking about uh, how Aldama has been playing a lot of go to hell ball this year. <laughs> like they haven't, re- and in his fairness, like you said, you make a great point. I don't feel like they've used him in the offense as much. It's been a lot of him just kind of, you know, improvising, I guess, on the fly. So that is a good point. They probably could have put him in better positions, uh, you know, to, to to make plays for sure. Yeah, I think uh, Aldama, you know. Not uh, he's not top three on the team, so I don't really care that much about him. <laughs> but uh, he, he's a player who can scale up. So you know, when you're side Jaw, Bain, and Jaren, he he can scale his offense to to passes and shooting, and I think that's a good use for him. Do you, do you see our number? Yeah, but you got anything on this one? Yeah, like I like the action. I and honestly, I I, I kind of teared up because I miss seeing Derrick Rose play basketball. But that's a whole nother different oh, thing from. Him. Do you, oh, um, but yeah, do do you see like? All Dama specifically kind of like operate on this team in the long term. If he doesn't show that he can like operate on a more playmaking role when Ja and Dez and all of them was all of them is back. Cause as Chris said, he get, he plays go to hell ball a lot. But says like them, <laughs> he has the capability to run these sets perfectly, you know? And he can hit like if I know that was him coming up, but let's say that's Luke coming up on the weak side for the on coming up the horn, that's another option on that play that you can hit. So do you see him or do you see another big being in that spot to operate that? Or do you kind of kind of want to limit to like maybe a Jaren or 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 insert big that will be coming up next year? Yeah, I think it's really important to get a playmaking big who can do that. Uh, mm-hmm. who can set, like I do like it for Jaren because one of Jaren's weaknesses is screening in space when he's yeah. moving. So if mm-hmm. he's just standing there doing the dribble handoff, less chance he gets a offensive foul. Uh, than if he's like screening for jar and pick and roll. But no, I think it's going to be important to get a playmaking big. I don't think Aldam is that. I think he's still useful because he has theoretical shooting and his length. He's a good, like, he's a good weak side rim protector. Uh, maybe not other aspects of defense, but with the current roster, they should keep Aldam, in my opinion, because he still brings shooting uh, and size. So, and he can, he can play with, he can play with anyone. He can play with ben, uh, Clark. He can play. With another big, you can play with Jaron. It's not like, you know, some of those like Trey Jemison, Brandon Clark's uh, front courts don't look too good, but uh, Aldama could fit in both of those. I agree, bro. You, you know your stuff, man. I can't even, I can't even argue with you, man. You know your stuff. <laughs> you muted, Chris. He's trying to force him <laughs> inside the arc as much as possible and then again back into the zone for the Bucks. Stevens against Green. Shot clock down to five. Lamar's got to go. Goes downhill. Goes to the cup. Ah! Wrap around for BC. Yes, and the foul. Okay, so I picked another scoring clip. But uh, this has been one of the worst sets the Grizzlies have ran this year. So one thing I do is uh, after I watch the game, I go back, rewatch it, write down every play that happened. uh, Because I like to see this efficiency on the different sets. And so this is Horns. And uh, slob stands for sign line out of bounds. So you're going to see, I think Kennard throws it in. Uh, looks like Goodwin's getting two screens. So you're going to see Clark, Lamar Stevens at the horns or the elbows. And they're going to set two screens for Goodwin. W- one thing I really don't like about this set is you see they ran it. And there's basically no advantage created. Goodwin didn't use the screens. He just passed it off to Lamar. And Lamar's in the exact same situation. Uh, he's being guarded by... Uh, 20 from the Bucks. I don't remember his name. I think it's Green um, and 44. So, like, there's no advantage here. He creates his own advantage because Lamar is pretty good. He's a physical player. He'll get to the basket. But bad there. The other slob set they run a lot is called uh, Delay Chicago. So, basically, it's going to be Clark gets the ball at the top of the key, and then the player from the corner is going to come up, receive an off-ball screen, and then get the handoff. And that's another play where – they run it a lot out of sideline, out of bounce, and it never creates an advantage and uh, and basically just kills momentum on the play. So these are two plays that delay, I think, is another uh, 
that could be a roster issue. Like if you had if you had Steven Adams in there and probably go a little better. But uh right now the roster is not built for that. So the sideline out of bounds plays are two of my two of my least favorite plays that they have because they run them frequently, they frequently get denied. And uh yeah, they do they do have one I like, which is a veer, but I won't talk about that right now. So I'd like to see them improve <laughs> on their uh sideline out of bounds execution and maybe the creativity out of those sets. Gotcha, gotcha. So all in all, because um, yeah, it, it, it like you said, the spacing is horrible, and it probably would be better with better players. I do like you, big up Lamar Stevens. Shout at you, Kenny. Me and Kenny uh, Stubblefield, we always <laughs> go back and forth about Lamar Stevens and Luca Dar. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, um, go ahead. Evan. You got any thoughts on that one? No, I, I agree. Um, I feel like we more times than not, there's a lot of sets where we have really no movement. You see, like Gigi's kind of stuck in the corner. Um, Luke flays down to the corner, but it's still no real movement, as um, Adam said. I see that a lot. Maybe, as we say, with the with the players that we have, we're not going to have that many advantage. But I feel like we need to have more sets where just movement are happening, where movement is just happening, not just having guys play, okay, we don't, you still got to beat your man to make something happen, as Lamar did there. Right. And it works sometimes, but in a, I'm, I'm always thinking about playoffs, in a consistent playoff series, a team. Like Denver is gonna sit on that, especially you don't have any really movement going on. And in reality, a double horns action should work when you have a job or a dance at the top of the key. We have no if you have no movement on the weak side or maybe another big flare, another bass grade for a shooter, then we don't you don't get an advantage on any any type of facet from it. So I like I agree with Adam. We need more variety, especially coming aside out of balance play, because all those little intricacies of an offense can be the difference between a playoff, a game seven loss in the playoffs or advancing to the next series. Yep, yep. I agree, man. I agree. <laughs> um, I want to get you out of here on this one, Adam. Um, because we talked about it, you know, throughout this basically conversation. Uh, but what's just what's some of the things that you want to see next year with these guys coming back fully healthy? Knock on wood, everybody. Um, they're coming back fully healthy, hopefully. Uh, addressing the center situation and what they need. I think this is going to be the most talented Grizzly teams we ever had. Uh, so what does Taylor Jenkins need to do to maximize his roster when it comes from the playbook and just using his players overall? So one one of the big things I like is egalitarian offense. So yeah, more shots for Jaw, more shots for Bain, more shots for Jaren, but also for other players on the team, you know, get Vince in there, get Gigi in there, Clark. So I'd like to see them share the ball more. And part of that is like, a lot of cutting, so a lot of baseline cuts. Maybe you could have like jaw just dribbles mm-hmm. towards the corner. That corner player cuts to the basket, easy pass. Um, a lot more angle cuts. So this is one of the things uh, LeBron and Reddick talked about was uh, his cuts from the slot. And you know, uh, mm-hmm. Gigi's really athletic, very strong. That's e- easy for him. He gets those out of a pick and roll or something, and he's going to the basket and scoring. So, and part of that is because you know you got teams like Denver. If you're Denver, you just run all your offense through uh, Jokic. He's like seven feet tall, best offensive player in the league. But a lot of other teams, uh, right. I'd prefer something like what the Miami Heat do, where it's more egalitarian. Mm-hmm. What uh, what those like 60 team, 60 win Jazz teams used to do, like you know they they had Mitchell, but they also had like a whole bunch of other offensive players, lots of shots, lots of cutting. Uh, and then like when an action is denied, they go back, run a different action, lots of second side creation. So that's the stuff I'd right. like to see involve, uh, try to involve all five players at least. Um, uh, now, w- one of the things I'm a big advocate for is fewer screens so, or fewer pick and rolls. What I don't like about pick and rolls is you, get, you have your player and then you're bringing another player on offense together and it's bringing two defenders to guard mm-hmm. it. I'd much rather, like mm-hmm. Jaw doesn't need a screen to get by his guy. Neither does Jaren. I'd much rather Jaw gets by his guy and then when the help comes he passes it out to them and then they can cut they can shoot and then just keep that advantage right. alive a lot of uh they call it like 0.5 basketball so just make the decision right away within half a second you pass you drive I- i'd much rather yeah. that than uh than like 25 jaw screens a game especially when jared ain't the best screener anyway <laughs> nah, we, that ain't, in, the, in the in the five years they play together we can never we can we've not been able to figure out a john jaren effective pick and roll i don't know why but clearly it hasn't worked so far so 
anything that Adam said would probably help because that's probably that's not the good <laughs> recipe for success, honestly. I remember yeah. the uh, I think it was the 2020 heat is like uh, when they got to the finals, uh, every round they had a different leading scorer, and I think that's something yeah. the Grizzlies could do. Mm. So that that's something I'd like to see. And even player. last year they had uh, they had Martin. He would he averaged like 25 points a game in the in the conference finals. I think going off. yeah yeah like, going yeah he off. went off. Like, so I'd like to see that a lot more. A lot more sharing the ball. A lot more movement cutting. But think but think about our team compared to those. We're more talented than those teams. I I I, I would argue that Marcus Smart and Gigi Jackson is, is more talented than Caleb Martin. That's why I feel like yep. it can be to our advantage. I agree with you, Adam. Yeah. I feel like that can be to our advantage. If it's Ja leading one series and Dez, then Gigi, then Smart, and we win a chip off of that, who's going to be mad about that? Is Ja going to be mad he not getting as much shots in the semifinals because we're playing, I don't know, the the Kings or something? Like, no, he's not, he's not going to care. But that's the thing with this team. As Chris right. said, this is probably the most talented team, especially if we hit in the draft or this free agency. Probably the most mortality team that we have. And if Taylor Jenkins can realize that and maximize it, I don't see, and do some of the things that you said, Adam, I don't I don't see anyone in the West besides maybe Denver really stopping us, honestly. Yep, most definitely, man. Oh, yeah. And also, well, you we're going to get you. Yeah. I'll go ahead. Oh, it's gonna, yeah, uh, I'll just have one more thing is I liked when they played really, really fast. So, like, two years ago, they're sprinting down the court, like, every possession, lots of transition play. I'd like yeah. to see that too, because you know that creates early advantages. You run early offense when it's uh, when people when the defenders are still running back. I'd yeah. Like just just go back to that too. Yeah, but that but that starts from defensive end also. It starts with yeah. everyone being yeah. active. On that that team you didn't mention that team was a very very good defensive team. That's the year, of course, Trip won the defensive player here, obviously. But we were getting deflections, a lot of block shots, a lot of steals. As the Grizzlies Instagram say, with stocks, steals, and blocks, we yeah. was always top right. of leading that. So that starts on defense end. And you can argue next year we'll be a def- better defensive team. If we keep Lamar Stevens, have Smart, Vince, and Jaron, you can argue we're going to be a better defensive team next year, than we, next year than we were that year. So if we can dial in defensively, then That's we true. can create some of those transition opportunities. So we can have Jai and Gigi just running the lane and having maybe Dez or Smart coming down and facilitating and Trip being a dunker spot, just coming in and wreaking havoc. So it's there. It's there. Right. The recipe is there. It's just all up to Jenkins to really maximize as we if we've talked about. Great conversation, y'all. Real talk. Yeah. Adam know what he's talking about, man. Yeah. Adam is a savant about this basketball stuff. That's for sure. That's for sure, man. Look, yeah, man. Look, you were a blessing to us today, breaking these down. Like I said, I'm not the the best guy with these. Evan is way (laughs) more advanced when it comes to the the names of the plays and stuff. I just got, I kind of, I view from the lens just from watching from what I see. Uh, but all of this stuff, it 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 kind of it goes into making your team the best it can be. And you know, if if, if, like you said, if Taylor can just put all this stuff into you know, one mix, one bowl, and mix it up all together. We got a championship on our teams, y'all. Yeah, it's – it's just got to – I agree with you. More screens, more actions, more ball movement. Not that all this just standing around, people in the corners, and Jack going to get a bucket. If we can focus on that, uh, as you see, as you heard today, you know, from Adam and Evan, you know, breaking this down, I think we – we close, y'all. We almost there. We almost there. So, any, any last words before we get out of here, Adam? Nope. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was great. Hope for we sure. see you again, sure. bro. Yeah, I follow him again. Follow him yeah, on Twitter, man. bro. You know yeah. what he's talking about. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> course, Absolutely. Bro. Absolutely. Well, well, we're going to get to this last commercial break, and we're going to end on this Mark Gasol situation on the other side. We'll be right back. Y'all stay tuned. For this past week, uh, it not only kept that 1% hope alive, I think that that percentage has grown because you see them beat Florida Atlantic, you realize – they can beat just about anybody in conference if they can beat that team. Yeah, and we we've we've known this. They haven't shown that in quite a while, but we've known the whole year that Memphis is really at their best, at their peak max powers. They're capable of beating pretty much any team in college basketball. I believe that. I mean, yeah, they have very quality wins. They've went in tough environments and won games against quality opponents. Like Memphis can beat a lot of top 25 teams in the country probably they're just that good on paper but for whatever reason they only show up at certain times tune into on the bluff with christian fowler and gabe coon every tuesday at 12 p.m on the bluff city media youtube channel (laughs) 
the next two years, if they can find a roster that works with those guys making the money they make, they'll have two legitimate shots at titles, I think, for two years. And now after that, you figure out what you're gonna figure out. Jaron's gonna come up again and his money's gonna be more. Maybe that's the point where you gotta you gotta break it up. This trade deadline and this offseason, acquiring some pieces that make sense for you, not development guys, not drafting guys, acquiring pieces and guys on favorable contracts that fit into your system, that finish those last little bits around the edges that you need. And that's, I think, why the next two years are so important. I think that's why the, the trade deadline is so important, as well as the offseason, because they've got to find pieces that work. They cannot develop guys. They're, they're, they're done with that. They can't be doing that anymore. Time is done. Tune in to The Daily Grind with Mark King and Loot Hatmaker at 1 p.m. every Monday through Friday, live on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, man. I'm, I I enjoyed this segment. Uh, no, nah, for, for sure. It was a dope segment, dope segment, dope segment. Absolutely. We appreciate Adam mm-hmm. for joining the show, man. Like I said, make sure y'all follow him if you're not already. Uh, we'll definitely get him on again and kind of break down some different stuff, probably in the offseason or, you know, definitely next season. Hoping to have a little bit different playbook as we talked about. Uh, Hopefully. We'll see what happens for sure. <laughs> uh, but we're going to end it, man. I, I can't, We can't get out of here without talking about this whole Marcus all situation. And we're going to try to wrap this up because we are a little bit lengthy today. Uh, but we're going to have to just, talk, just, just wrap everything with a bow from this weekend, man. Uh, I will let you start because, like I said, I kind of got some sentiments that I want to get out just about, you know, the, the whole uh, retirement ceremony and even the documentary as well, tying that all together, man. But I know you said you watched it, um, got to watch it, and, and kind of just, you know, hearing from, you know, through your lens, you know, kind of how you received it, some of the things that you pointed out, and just all together, this whole Mark Gasol situation, man. How you feel? Simple, simple. I can put it. Mark Gasol is my childhood. The core four – it's my childhood. That that's the group that made me fall in love with the game of basketball. That's the group mm-hmm. that made me fall in love with being a Memphis Grizzlies fan. So I'll forever be David. Though they, I have met all of them, but even though they don't know who I am, I will ever be <laughs> indebted to the core four. And just the whole ceremony was beautiful, man. It just made everybody, even though the game was a crap show, as you would as you mentioned, it just right. made everybody appreciate one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player in Grizzlies history. Um, I thought having Lionel there, having Kyle Lowry, Mike Miller, like everyone besides the core four, I feel like it was right. good to have just a community. It seems like Mark touched a lot of people that he played with. Even They, they even said Bino was there. I was kind of mad that OJ Mayo wasn't there. That's the only person I wanted to see. I was like, where OJ at? That's the only person I was kind of upset. I don't know what OJ doing now. Don't know. He may be in another country. I don't know what OJ is doing. I thought OJ uh, could have popped out for the for the ceremony. You know, you know what happened last time OJ was with Memphis, right? Didn't he get kicked out of leave or something? I don't know. What happened? Well, no, uh, you know, Tony <laughs> Allen popped on him. So he oh, may not okay. want to. He yeah, may not, he may not be too happy. <laughs> yeah, he may not he be may be too <laughs> excited. <laughs> yeah, OJ. I mean, shout out to OJ though. But um, <laughs> it was beautiful. Like, bottom line, it was beautiful. Um, the documentary, as we mentioned, as you mentioned, was a great documentary. Um, it really pointed out just the differences in like of the grid and grind era to the era now. I know we talked about a little bit. Um, I really hope that Ja and De- and Jaron and Dez and Gigi and Smart was really listening and really Man. absorbing everything they, that was said in that documentary, every vignette they showed during the timeout, as you mentioned, and all everything the core four was saying when they did the um, post-game ceremony. It really right. seemed like those guys loved each other, and they loved the city of Memphis, and they loved the team, and they really – like. They really wanted to win for this city. They bought in right. super early, yep. you know, and it's just it's very rarely you can find a, a four core guys that have the same sentiment with each other that can create a culture, not just for a team, for a city that can galvanize a city and change the trajectory of a city, not just a team, a city. If right. people don't people don't really remember the Hubie Bryan days in Memphis, when you think of Memphis Grizzlies, you think of the grit and grind era. So I yeah. really hope that my thing I take away from besides like the beautiful ceremony is with the new guy. I hope they realize the opportunity they have because they are undoubtedly more talented than all the four guys on that stage. And I love those Thank four you. guys. I, 
I love them. Those, those were my – that's my childhood. I would never – you never hear me a bad thing to say about any of those four guys on that. Right. But the crew right. we have now is abundantly more talented than, than them. So 100%. they have the opportunity to, to build on what the core four started and make it exponentially greater and really bring something nice and bring something great to the city of Memphis. So I really – that's what I really want to focus on. I really hope the new guys really – Realize the opportunity they have and don't squander it over whatever the world. We know the situation with job. We know that. And hopefully that's behind him. Right. We think it is behind him. But things like that, I'm just saying an example because that's the most recent, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the most recent example. But I hope they realize the opportunity they have because these guys were not as talented and did way more in the seven years they were together. Oh, sure did. Seven straight playoff runs. That's a very, that's a very hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. Seven straight playoff runs with a with deep runs. nucleus of guy. Like deep runs, yeah. seven, that's a hard thing to do. So I yeah. just really hope the new crew of guys understand that they have an opportunity to do something great so that we can really finally have that party on Bill Street that we always talk about. Yeah, man, I, I'm going to kind of start with the, uh, the documentary and, and I'll kind of end it with the ceremony. Uh, the, the documentary, I, I don't want to <laughs> We had a lot of Grizzly shows that have talked about it in length, um, or you know, or, or, whether it's the Bluff City Media, Grand City Media, whatever. Uh, the documentary was amazing. Shout out to Michael Blevin, uh, shout out to Mark and everybody shout else out. that had parts to play in that. Um, uh, got to learn a lot about that. I can't believe the fact that literally we could have had Palcasaw and Marcus and Marcus, Marcus for five hundred thousand dollars, bro. We could have had Chris Wallace. Come on, fam. Like, I've never liked you, but even now I, I don't like you even more. Because I don't think that that have, was that was Heisley that didn't want to pay. Heisley, okay, that was how yeah, that was, yeah. That was, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was Heisley. But 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 yeah. but but Chris Wallace, <laughs> he is not beyond any type of criticism. I don't care what nobody say. Mm-hmm. Uh he had he had some bonehead stuff too. Mm-hmm. Uh but just you know Steph Curry. that whole man Steph, on, Steph and Curry, Kevin Love. I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not mad at all at, at Marcus all feeling some kind of way. That I had the rookie season that I had, and you bring in Hashim to beat. Oh my goodness, bro! Asshole ass, just, just no hands yeah. having. Can't man. shoot. Can't man. He has small hands. Shout out Stephen A. Smith. But like, uh, I, 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 if I was Mark, I would have. Mark is a better man than me because you telling me I was second team on rookie and you draft a guy in my position, like. Mm-hmm. I would have clocked out at the, and then first you trade my brother first thing, and I and right. my brother my brother expressed that he didn't want to leave. My family had roots here. I grew mm-hmm. up here, and you trade my brother away. Right. Then the next offseason, after I had a good record, so you you bring in a guy in my position. Yeah, I I commend Mark. I commend Mark for sticking through the tough times because yep. the front office I'm glad we got the front office we do now because we went through a lot of bonehead front offices and GMs and owners and all that type of stuff too. Yeah, I I really think that that whole situation, you know, how it played out. It was it was it was great to watch, bro. I just say that. Mm-hmm. Uh one of the things like you said hitting on for me and people going to say, you know, I I'm whatever. I don't care what you say cuz my mind ain't changing. The way that them guys speak up even to this day Lionel Hollis about the way that he came in and changed that culture um mm-hmm. you you hear in that piece and I don't know if it was an editing thing it could have been Michael Blevins could have purposely did it this way uh but they talked about just losing habits before Lionel and they talk about the winning habits that were brought up on when Lionel came through uh mm-hmm. all of them guys talk about I mean Mike made the comment uh at the ceremony he was saying the young boys ain't I don't gonna like, like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they gonna rock with that type but, of culture. Yeah. But I looked at my pops because my pops, I was there with my pops and, and uh, some other family. I said, "That's actually probably what they need. What like need. you ain't gotta like it. You know, you, I'm not telling you to like it. You probably will hate it. But if that's what's gonna get y'all to the next step, that's what you need. And you know, I I, I hear them talk up about you know Taylor Jenkins how they love him, how he's a players' coach, how you know they get he got it. Uh, he's got their back. That's their dog, and all these things are where like. It's great friendship. You know, it's a great relationship there. And you probably need to have that in a coach-player relationship. You probably don't want to have, you know, playing and coach hating each other for real where they just don't listen to each other. We've seen that be nightmares in the NBA. But it's got to be a healthy balance. And I would even – when I say healthy, uh, maybe even a little toxic on the other side. 
because these guys have, like you said, the best talent we've ever had in a Grizzly uniform going into next year. I'm sorry. Like, the offseason is not even done yet, but I just know they're not going to mess this team up. They're too close to mess it up. You can only add to what we have. And, uh, you know, the way that they talk about him versus the way that these current players talk about Jenkins, that was one of the things that just as far as changing the culture, yes, we have a great culture. You can bring in a Xavier Simpson and them guys are going to clap him up doing a hook shot. They're not going to, you know, talk about him, make him feel bad. They're going to empower him. The culture is great, but it does need a certain shift, I feel like. Uh, and if Taylor Jenkins can go home this summer and find a way to do that, great. Because he's going to be on the high seat next year with this roster. And so uh, I don't want to turn it into that too much, but that's just one of the things that stuck out to me the most, the way that mm -hmm. them guys – by him as well as the care factor like you said that they had for winning themselves like they yeah. held themselves accountable you know them for to say hey this is what we're gonna do early on i mean that people forget that spurs first round series upset that they had that wasn't very long into their tenure like it was what 13? 2011 2011 my bad 2011 yeah yeah that's mark's third year like bro like they were they were prime mike, was, early. Mike, mike mike was a fourth year player that was mike's fourth year that was Mike's full view. Mike was and Mike because he came out of high state as a freshman. So Mike was maybe 21, yep. 22 at the time. Mark yep. <clears throat> was maybe 22. Zebo and TA, they were they were exiled from their past teams. So that's a whole yep. another wrinkle to it. Why that team was so special because you had two guys that was basically re especially Zebo. Especially Zebo. Mm -hmm. Zebo was his name got driven through the no the controversy that he did. We ain't gonna talk about all that because we love right. Zebo here. Um, <laughs> but like those those four guys coming together in that 2011 series, that that was the shift, and yep. it and it and it resonated through the rest of the run there. And unfortunately, they couldn't bring home a chip. But that's that's the best era of Grizzly battles we've ever seen. And yep. the everyone can attest the energy in the forum and in the city at that time. You can you can trade it for the world, like yep. no, unless we would have to win a chip now to replace. What happened right. then? I don't care if we go to five right. conference finals and lose all of them. Unless we bring a championship to the city of Memphis with this core, you people will never look at this time better. The expectations than, are than, higher, bro. It is. It's straight like it's straight like that. You because, got a superstar, you got you a defensive superstar. player of the year, and you got a league best shooter. Because honestly, the only legit years that in this comes a greatest fan that we had to win a chip was 2015 and 2013. Those were the two. I feel like we actually had a legit chance to win a chip. 2013 is when Mark was deployed and we went to the East Con West Coast Finals, but we saw how that happened. Because, yeah, we got swept, but that, that series was a lot closer than the series. Those All those games were like single-digit games. So I feel like that was – and then 2015 was against the Warriors. Before the Warriors dynasty, we might broke his face. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Those were the two, two seasons I honestly thought we had a legit chance of making a run for it, and we came up short. Yeah. We have the 2021-2022 season. That was the Grizzlies chance. This next year is our 2015 season. If you understand the connection I'm making right now. That's the shot. This is this is our shot right now. And we may have maybe one or two more, maybe. Depends on how this how the how the league shakes up. But we we have to go now. The time to win is now. And I really hope that the the beautiful ceremony and the whole week that has been celebrating Mark and the whole grid and grind era because I really because I know it's gonna be more when TA I don't know why TA hasn't hasn't had his number retired yet but whenever that happens well of course, he Mike, was supposed to have it last year but that yeah he was supposed to have it last year yeah so they, so they didn't want to yeah and then when Mike when Mike retires when he gets his jersey retired because we know Mike's when his jersey retired we're gonna mm -hmm. celebrate this time but you know how good it would seem if we have that jersey time and while we're already have a chip under our belt. Then Mike and them can say we started something and y'all finished it off. Yep. Mike can talk to Jai and say, I was conductor then, you are the conductor now, and you started what I finished. Right, right. Who doesn't yeah. want to have that, fam? Like, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. They 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 gotta definitely have that care factor. I hope they watched that that documentary um and got that from it. Uh just ending on the ceremony, man. That was for me. I'll be honest, I got a little emotional up in that joint. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if I was done, um, I would done it too. <laughs> you just I mean, you you getting to hear them guys talk about the good old days. You're getting to hear them, yeah. you know, you looking up the jumbo trying they showing the highlights, and you gotta just get the get the feel and remember where you were when a certain situation happened. I, I leaned over and was talking to my pops. I was like, Man, I remember when they upset the 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 Spurs that year. I remember exactly where I was. I was working at Costco doing security outside. 
probably shouldn't say that. Well, well whatever. <laughs> yeah. Set, your you set your limitations. Uh, but I was yeah. in my car watching the game, listening to the game, and um, man, I was going wild in there, bro. Like I couldn't believe what was happening. And so you just get to see that foundation be laid. We're talking about them guys being so young in Jaron, Ja, and Dez will be going into, I believe, year five, six, and seven next year. Yeah, five, six, and seven, yeah. For all of them, um, yeah, it's time, bro. It's time. It. Uh, you're gonna have GG in his second year. Um, I personally want to see them possibly get bringing Donovan Klingon. I think he could probably be that last piece if he can stay healthy. If the medicals come back, um, he's got great pass, a great rebounder. But you just talk about other stuff they need to do to shore up the roster, they can do it, bro. I just want them guys to lock in and see the love that the city showed them guys last night. Mm-hmm. And see, look, we want to see y'all in 15 years, you know, doing the same coming thing back and doing the exact same thing. Like, but like you said, with a championship ring, not just one of them, not yeah. just one of them guys leaving or, or whatever, all four or five, whoever this core we, we deem it to be, them coming back and them all sitting front row and we celebrating them to say, oh, they did it. And not just once, but multiple championships. I think they got it, bro. It's just they're going to all have to lock in collectively. Players, coach, organization, and the city, we're going to have to be behind them, rooting them on to get them over that hump, man. I, I think we got a special situation going on. Uh, but shout out to Mark. Like I said, it's just yeah. between the documentary and the ceremony, I was like, man, this is nostalgia 101 right here for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I want to leave it off on two things. Number one, as your point, you said, we should have a 12, a 22, a 13, and a 45 in the rafters. By the time this this stretch is done, and y'all know the, the players I'm talking about, those four jerseys yep. should be in the Raptors in the next 15 years. So that's one thing. But second, yep. I want to ask you, Chris, where do you rank Mark on the Grizz all time, and what is your favorite Marcus all moment? Because I know mine, but I I want to see what you say. We gonna we gonna get out of here. If we it depends, man. When you're talking about strictly basketball all time, I give mm-hmm. him number three okay. because. Impact behind behind everything. behind Zebo and Mike, <laughs> Zebo and Ja. Oh, oh, okay, Ooh, okay, cool, okay. My bad. <laughs> we never had a job of rant, bro. Like I, I yeah. People, me and Sane were talking about this Ja's rookie year. People was like scared to say that Ja was the best point guard in, in our history. I, I get it; he's a rookie, but you can look at that guy and tell. I'm sorry. I love Mike. Mike is a, is, a, is a close second, and everything he did as far as accomplishments, I understand that. But we just talking about strictly the best is Ja. So, so mm-hmm. if we're talking about best, I'm going to say it's Ja and, and, and Zebo 1-2, and I'm going to give Mark number three. But if you're talking mm-hmm. about impact on the city, you're talking about just you know embodiment, it's hard for me to really pick between him and Zebo when it comes to that sentimental value. Yeah. To me, they they right up there together on that round, uh, Mount Rushmore of Grizzlies all time, man. Because I mean, you saw mm-hmm. this weekend; they just them guys meant too much to the city, bro. They just did, yeah, yeah for sure. And I, I I I give you saying on the best thing, and people are gonna disagree with me on this because I'm a biased fan. But Mike will ever be my goat because the reason I say Mike is just because he the one that held that conglom- conglomerate together. He was the guy that he had it's to a lot win of work. the spot. He had he had the guy he had to win the spot from Kyle Lowry. He had to deal with all the different personalities of Zebo and Mark and Ta. I just feel like Mike doesn't get his flowers, so he'll always be. And I, I'm biased because he was my favorite player growing up, so I, mm-hmm. I understand coming from a biased perspective. But just people <laughs> underrate the impact that Mike needed for that. I don't think you could have thrown another guy in that team; it would have worked the same way. I honestly don't. Yeah, because just the personalities yeah. they jive together. Mike was probably right. one of the most unselfish guys on that team. Because if Mike wanted to drop 25, 30 a game, he probably could. Because I feel like he was just that good when he when he was playing with us, if he wanted to. But bro, that Spurs series, I want to say his last year when he yeah, was going 2017. Up with Kawhi. With Kawhi, God. that that's that's when Mike shown. Hey, if I really want to lock in and be the best good player God. on this team, that's why that's why I give Mike his flowers. That's why he'll forever be my goat of just Memphis mm-hmm. of Grizzly. Ja gonna have to win a chip to get to get my vote. And I love Ja. Ja's my favorite player now. But to get like my vote for just being the goat of Memphis, I'll yeah. always give Mike his flowers. And my favorite Mark moment for will for always be um it was a step step through three point he made in San Antonio to bank it in to send to oh, OT wow. that wreck season again. Yeah. I remember watching yeah. that. I remember watching that whole game. And I was like, oh, my gosh, Marcus Allen is freaking amazing. But anyway, um, yeah, Mike is my greasy goat. I understand why people put Mark and Zebo up there. But we love all people greasy. 
But that I just yeah. get that feeling there. I, I love Mark and I grave and I love that he get his fouls. But I gotta give him the conductor, Mac Eleven, his flowers too. And I, I will definitely try to be in attendance when his jersey gets in the Raptors because yeah, I feel like he's meant to me if it's just just as much. And he was there and he was there the longest too. And he and he was the longest team at Grizzly compared to everyone else in yeah. the core four. Yeah, so that's true. I, I just want to give Mike his flowers a little bit before we get out of here. Yep, yep. Salute to them, man. Young mm-hmm. guys, y'all got big shoes to fill, man. Let's go. Facts. Let's Straight go. Like All, and whatever happened in the last 24 months, wipe it. Let's go. Yep. Straight like <laughs> that. Go. All right, man. We're going to end it on the, the record for the week, man. We got four four games left. This is insane. Mm. This is uh, it right here? The, we done, yeah, bro. It. We done. Yeah. Uh, we got the Spurs. We got one more away game with the Cavs. And then we got the Lakers and Nuggets at home to end it off, man. What you got the guys going this week? I'm a, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go out to Michigan and say split it, because the Cavs have not looked good since post All Star mm-hmm. break. They are desperate because they are they're like maybe fifth. I feel like they're fourth or fifth in the playoffs right. And they're trying not to get in the play in, but I can just mm-hmm. see us just because they haven't played well. They just haven't played. They just haven't looked good. Double yeah. Mitchell has not. He's he's averaging ten less points post All Star break than he is pre All Star break. And I don't know what's going on in Cleveland. So I'm saying yeah, we get the Spurs because I just feel like. Jaren, I just feel like we just like beating the Spurs. Uh, <laughs> us loop, getting the Cavs and then the Lakers and the Nuggets. Yeah, you know how I go with the Nuggets. So, yeah. Zero and four. Zero and four is insane. Okay. <laughs> Zero and four is insane. Look, if they, if they are shutting down I – mean, I was in. A, I was counting last night because we sat behind the bench. We had eight people. If they are sitting last night. over – over $500, $600 million in contracts are sitting <laughs> on your bench – if they are shutting all them guys down for the rest of the year, what game are they gonna win based off what I saw last night? I don't. If they if, I think if they're running with that lineup, I got. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. BC, he played. I mean, I feel bad for him. I mean, shout out to him with the alley oop, but <laughs> he was fighting for his man, life last night. Good God, yeah. I don't think them guys. Yeah, if they if they bring in another ten day guy uh, to sit BC, which makes sense. Man, just let, just get us out of here. Matter of fact, honestly, if I'm being honest, I want them to see GG too, because that's creating bad habits. He he's playing with better players probably in the hustle than he is playing out there right now. And I, I just, do. you know, you're looking for him to take over. All that does is fuel the guys that want him to be guys and gals that want him to be a role player to be a score guy off the bench. No, 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 no. He has earned. He's had a great season. If you're gonna sit the rest mm-hmm. of them, do sit him too, because you ain't doing them but building bad habits, and then you're gonna have something to talk about, call him selfish or whatever else you're gonna call. Him. Like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 don't set my boy up like that. So, nah, yeah. don't do that. That's just me. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, but we're gonna get out of here, man. Uh, amazing show today. Uh, definitely want to appreciate Adam Pike for joining us, breaking down those, uh, breaking down the playbook, um, uh, mm-hmm. and just kind of going through it. was definitely a learning experience for sure. Let us know how y'all felt about that in the comments. We appreciate all the feedback we've been getting uh, on the show and everything like that. Evan, what you got for us when we get out of here, bro? Uh, not much. I got I'm writing my last um, article for Bluff City for this season on the tenth. Yeah, the Cavs game. That be my last uh, post game article for the season. So again, I just want to say appreciate Bluff City for giving me the opportunity. I didn't know initially this was going to happen when I first started working for Bluff City, but hey, <laughs> God works in serious way. Shout out my boy Chris. But um, shout out everyone at Blow City for giving me an opportunity um, to write for them this year. So hopefully I continue that. So my last article, post game article, will be last one for the for the cast. So it's been it's been a good journey. Uh, hopped on in November, and it seemed like it's going really fast because you know that's just how Damn. time flies, especially with the NBA season. So yep. um, yeah, me, y'all have put on lookout for my last article. I may put a little sappy stuff in there since it's my last article, but you know, <laughs> for sure, for sure. But that's that's all that's all I got for me, bro. For sure, for sure. Well, man, I, like I said, another good one in the books. Um, excited to get this season over. I'm glad it's done. Uh, we were talking about up there at the game last night. Like, how many we got left? Like, let's just <laughs> yeah, get it, get, sure. get this over with, and let's move on, man, to, to greater pastures. Uh, I'm excited for next year, probably more than I've been excited for any NBA season ever. Uh, for sure. So, man, y'all lock in, man. It's going to be a ride for sure. Uh, again, we appreciate y'all's support. Uh, and we'll catch y'all next week, man. Y'all have a safe, blessed week. And as always, go Grizz. Go Grizz.
Thank you for listening to this episode of the No Bluffing Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of all things Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week. Thank you.